telling you basically what Paul was just referring to because remember, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi was Jews, correct? Was the Jews of the New Testament. But what about the Samaritans and, and, the, and the rest of the tribes that was there? Were they considered, huh? They was cast away as heathen, right? So what was Paul's ministry to do? To bring the Gentiles back into the fold. So now when, they, when Paul bring them back into the fold, he letting them know in Romans that all Israel is going to be saved now. It ain't just for Judah, Benjamin, and Levi as it was once before when he cast them off. It's for all of the twelve now. How y'all doing? How y'all brothers and sisters doing today? What we doing, we going over ways on how to change the community. Who tired of the gun violence in their community? Who tired of the drugs in their community? Those are the things that we teach. All right? Read. Romans chapter 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So now, give me, now hold that. Now let's get the precept or the understanding on what is Paul talking about. Let's go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11, start at verse 51. The book of John, chapter 11, and verse 51. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So, going back to, going back, so now, hold that, keep that there, and um, so, it's telling you basically what Paul was just referring to because remember Judah, Benjamin, and Levi was Jews, correct? Was the Jews of the New Testament. But what about the Samaritans and, and, the, and the rest of the tribes that was there? Were they considered, huh? They was cast away as heathen, right? So what was Paul's ministry to do? To bring the Gentiles back into the fold. So now when, they, when Paul bring them back into the fold, he letting them know in Romans that all Israel is going to be saved now. It ain't just for Judah, Benjamin, and Levi as it was once before when he cast them off. It's for all of the twelve now. You understand that? Because who was in who was the Romans that Paul was speaking to in Rome? Who who was who was in Romans? Who was in Rome? Excuse me. They was Israelites, right? So all right, hold that. Give me just to prove that. Give me what's that? Acts eighteen and two to show you who was in Rome. Acts eighteen and two. Hold that, in John. Acts 18 and 2. Just because we want to prove all things. Read that. The book of John, chapter 18 and verse 2. Uh -huh. And found a certain Jew. A who? A certain Jew. Uh -huh. Named Aquila. Uh -huh. Born in Pontus. Uh -huh. Lately come from Italy. With his wife Priscilla. So Italy is where? Italy is in Rome, right? So it just proved to you that the Jews was in Rome. Alright? That's the reason why we went there. So when you go back to the Romans... It's talking about the Jews that are in Rome. You understand that? And Paul is letting you know I'm bringing the other nine tribes into the fold. How you doing, my brother? Hey. What's your name? Tanzo. Who? Tanzo. Tanzoil? Tanzo. Tanzo. Yeah. All right, good to meet you, Tanzo. What we're going over right now is some history, some historical history in the Bible and how um, the, the, the Israelites, the, the three tribes and the other nine tribes is now brought into the yeah, fold, Paul? all right? So it's all 12 yeah, tribes that yeah. now can be it's saved. That. Um, what? So you understand that? But what's your nationality, brother? I want you to stay here and listen to this real quick as we go over this. Cause I got some questions I want to ask you. Learn your All right, sister, you too. What's your name? My sister with the purse. Uh, Joanne. Jo Joanne. What we going over now is this is solutions in the Bible on how to get our people out of these conditions, and also we going over um bringing the other nine tribes into the fold. So you with me? Um, what's your name? Bring it huh? Terrence, you with me? So now go back to. John, because it said all Israel can be saved now. But what is it talk? What is that making reference to? We're gonna read it again. Start at verse forty-nine. We're gonna read it all the way through. Chapter eleven and verse forty-nine. The book of John, chapter eleven and verse forty-nine. And one of them named Cephas, Cephas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them. Ye know nothing at all, nor consider 
because the scribes and Pharisees was trying to take down Christ and they was worried about their place and their position. But he's telling them, you don't, you know nothing at all because he's a high priest as well. He's they, he's they peer, so to speak, read. Nor consider that it is expedient for us uh -huh. that one man should die. That one man is Christ, that he should die, read. For the people, for the people, read on. And that the whole nation perish. And that the whole nation, what whole nation? This whole nation. Because who were the scribes and Pharisees? It was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Those was the scribes and Pharisees, which was the southern, which was the southern kingdom. All right. But he's telling them, look, he came to die for the whole nation, all twelve of the tribes. Read, and that the whole nation perish not, and that the whole nation perish not. Read on, and this spake he not of himself. And he ain't, Christ ain't speaking of himself. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. That D, that Jesus should die for that nation. Meaning all 12 of the tribes, not just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Read on. And not for that nation only. And not for, excuse me, not for that nation only. Read. But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So he shall gather in one the children that are scattered abroad, going back to the all 12 tribes, because the rest of them was scattered. All right? So now, hold that. Give me um, Matthew 4 and 13. Is that what thirteen where it talks about uh... Yeah, Matthew four and thirteen. You got it? Yeah. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter four and verse thirteen. Uh -huh. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, uh -huh. which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon. In the borders of who? The borders of Zebulon. Who is Zebulon? Zebulon is a part of the nine tribes that were scattered. Right. And Naphtali, uh -huh. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, uh -huh. the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, uh -huh. by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee, of the Gentiles. Right, so Naphtali and Zebulon was called Gentiles because they were living like Gentiles, because they were a part of that nine nation that Christ also came to die for that we read in John. That makes sense? So, so you can understand, so when you read Romans 11, it's talking, when it says all nations are going to be saved, it's now talking about all 12 tribes and not just only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Do you, that make sense, though? All right. So, hey, my brother, I got a question for you. What's your nationality? African-American, right? So when we go over, we're teaching our people on how we are the nation of Israel. We're not African-American. We're not blacks. You understand that? That's, that? Those terms are not found in the Bible. You understand that? So when you ask, so when Christ come to come, when Christ return, who is he coming for? You don't know? Huh? Whatever I believe. What about what the Bible say? Give me that. Uh, what's that? 15? Yeah, 15, 15 and 24. Because Christ not coming to save everybody. Christ not coming to give kisses and hugs when he come. He coming with flames of uh, flames of fire. All right? And when he come to, and he coming to save, he coming to save. We're going to show you we coming to save. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. No, everybody. Of the house of Israel. All nations. The house of Israel. So, brother, you understand that? So, Christ is only coming back for the nation of Israel. You understand? He ain't coming back for everybody. So, if I was you, I would try to get in line. I would try to see where I line up in this, up. In this redemption that um, Christ is coming for. Well, hey, what other questions you got, brother? He's a preacher. He's a modern day, modern day preacher, right? Okay. First and before. Right. So uh, we brought out a scripture, and I, and I kind of went over what what Cornelius was. Doing. You know, when Cornelius came to Peter, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, Acts. That was Acts 10. That was, uh, that I made clean. Right. That was not talking about food. That was talking about the same thing we were just going over, uh, the southern and northern kingdom, because Peter was getting what? Peter was, the angel came to him and was telling him basically that now 
salvation is for the uh, the, the northern kingdom, which is considered unclean. That's what that's going into. But a lot of times, people, what, what you have men to draw on or their own lust, they'll take scriptures like this, for example, and they'll take it out of the context that is written in. Read that real quick. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For every creature of God is good uh -huh. and nothing to be refused. So a lot of Christians use that to say, now I can eat pork. Now I can eat shrimp. I can eat crab and I can eat lobster. Read. If it be received with thanksgiving. And they say, all we got to do is pray over it in Christ. And then when they're talking about Christ, they're talking about the white image of Christ. They're talking about Sergio Borgia, which is not Christ at all. You understand? That's what they say. But is that really what that's talking about? No, because God gave you the law in Leviticus 11 on what to separate from the clean and the unclean. You understand? So when they use that, or they use the one in Acts the chapter to say, now I can eat what I want to eat, and that's not what they were talking about. That was an allegory. That was going into the, the northern kingdom can be saved now. Which, which Cornelia was a, a northern kingdom Israelite. Give me that, Acts 10, 28. So we can... All right, what you got? Right. Uh, I can't hear you. Speak up a little bit, bro. Right. Mm. She don't want that. Right. <laughs> exactly. So I'm trying to You know the best way to deal with her is through your walk. Do you gotta she gotta see that you're serious about this? Okay. And she gotta see that you're keeping the commandments, brother. Let me tell you one. Go back to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 real quick. I wanna show you something real quick as it relates to your wife. Because we, we have brothers amongst us that have that same issue. They are coming in, they came in, but their wife was an unbeliever. You know what I'm saying? But they did something. A few brothers, they fruit brothers still here, and they brought their wife in finally after years of fighting. Then you got some brothers that they followed after their wife and they left. You understand? We don't want you to be named the one that second branch who followed after their wife and just and, 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 and depart from God. We want you to come into the fold. But it's something it's something that you must do. If you if you ain't keeping the Sabbath day holy, then she ain't gonna take you serious. If you ain't got fringes on your garment, she ain't gonna take you serious. If you're not coming to congregate on the Sabbath and being around like-minded brothers, she ain't going to take you serious. You have to grow in the spirit as you learn it, and, and it only comes through congregating. You understand? Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 13. Uh -huh. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, uh -huh. and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Uh -huh. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Uh -huh. Else were you children unclean. Uh -huh. But now are they holy. Right. But if the unbelieving depart. So. Right. So uh, so verse 13. Read it again. Verse 13. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not. Or vice versa. In your case you will be have a wife that believe not. Read. And if he be pleased to dwell with her. Or if she be pleased to dwell with you, meaning that what? It's going to explain. Read. Let her not leave him. Uh -huh. For the unbelieving husband. Or in your case, the unbelieving wife. Read. Is sanctified by the wife. Meaning your wife will be cleansed by your works. or if she, But she have to be pleasing to dwell, which means she have to keep the commandments of God as well. Because of the love that she have for you. But she won't start keeping the commandments if you're not fully keeping the commandments. You have to be serious. You have to command your house. Hey, look, we're not cooking in this house today. It's the Lord's Sabbath day. You understand? We're not, we not buying or selling on today. It's the Lord's Sabbath day. You understand? We, you have to put your foot down and you also, most importantly, have to walk the walk. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation